Today I'm reviewing the Canon 17-55 f2.8 lens. Even though this lens isn't perfect, I'm willing to bet that it is the best bang for your buck Canon EFS lens out there. It can kind of do everything. This was literally the only lens that I owned for the entire first year that I owned my videography company. So in this video today, I'll show you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and a couple alternatives that you should be thinking about if you're taking a look at buying this lens. So right off the bat, the first negative thing that you should know about this wonderful lens is that it doesn't have the best build quality. When I bought this lens brand new three years ago, it wasn't that bad, but over time, the quality kind of started to go down the toilet. Now if you shake it, the lens kind of makes a rattling noise. The zoom ring is way too loose. If you want to get a top down shot at 35 millimeters, this isn't the lens to do that. It won't stay. And it doesn't even have a weather seal, so you can't use this thing in the rain at all. But even with all that bad stuff about the build quality of this lens, I still really like it. And a lot of it has to do with the standard zoom range of this lens, which kind of makes it a do everything type of lens. That 17 to 55 zoom range means that it's good for wide establishing shots, tight detail shots, portraits when zoomed in, and landscapes when zoomed out. This lens can do it all, and that's how I got away with it being the only lens that I used for a whole year. After that standard zoom range, my second favorite thing about this lens is the 2.8 constant aperture. This means that it's better than most beginner lenses at two things. Shots where you don't have a lot of light and depth of field blurry background type of shots. And I gotta say that I'm a big fan of the bokeh that this lens produces. There's just something so soft and smooth and creamy about it. I don't know. They make it look really good. I should probably stop throwing this thing around. Now I wanna talk about the sharpness of this lens because in some situations, it is a really nice and sharp lens, but in others, not so much. At its widest aperture of f2.8, this lens is actually kinda soft. It's not very sharp at all. But to fix that, all you gotta do is stop it down one notch to f3.2. That wide open sharpness issue became such a problem for me that I eventually made the decision that that lens is only a 3.2 lens for me. I never opened up the aperture past 3.2 unless I was shooting super low light and then the trade-off would make sense. Now I wanna talk about the optical image stabilization. For me, this was really important in this lens because when I got this lens, I didn't have any kind of stabilizer for my camera when I was shooting my videos. And that optical stabilizer does make a big difference. But odd enough, just so that you know about it, the optical stabilization mechanism in this lens actually makes quite a bit of noise. It's not really loud enough for any microphones to pick it up, but I just thought that was weird and you should probably know about it. And here's a quick autofocus test along with how the autofocus motors sound with a microphone mounted in the hot shoe. Now let's talk about the price. You can get this lens brand new for about, I think, eight or nine hundred dollars these days but I've seen them on eBay for something like around 400 bucks. It's really interesting that this lens depreciates so much and I think it has something to do with the low build quality, like since it sounds like that. So that makes me think that it would be much more beneficial if you bought this lens used rather than new. That should save you like 400 bucks. Just make sure that there's a decent return policy attached to that. And finally, now I wanna talk about the alternatives, the other lenses on the market that you should think about before purchasing this guy. Two lenses you should look at. The first is the Sigma 18 to 35 F 1.8. And the other is the Sigma 17 to 50 F 2.8. That 17 to 50 millimeter F 2.8 lens is basically the exact same thing as this, except $300 brand new. But there's a catch if you're buying it for video purposes. The autofocus motors on that Sigma lens are way too loud. I owned that lens before this one and had to return it because the autofocus motors were so loud. But if you wanna use it for photos, hell yeah, give it a spin. It's basically almost the same zoom range, same f2.8 constant aperture, same super high image quality. Just watch out for those autofocus motors if you wanna use it for videos. And now that 18 to 35 f1.8 lens, that lens is a little different from this one because it's got a wider constant aperture of 1.8, which is pretty freaking cool. And as you can tell from the name of it, it only zooms into 35 millimeters instead of 55 millimeters. And another trade-off is that it doesn't have any optical image stabilization. Other than that though, that lens is a killer lens. I've used it once on one video project and it was amazing. So that Sigma 18 to 35 is kind of a better lens in my opinion than this one, but it doesn't have the optical image stabilization. And you'll actually see that Sigma lens out in the wild on a lot of video shoots. So it's used a lot of the time on mid to lower end cinema cameras actually. But it's, it's almost an industry standard in that niche. It's pretty nice. And it's basically just as much money as this Canon lens, interestingly enough. So that was my review on the Canon 17-55. to I hope it helped you out. Feel free to use the affiliate link in the description. I would greatly appreciate that. And I'll see you in the next one. Adios. Thank you.